Guys, you're going to be so disappointed in me. I've decided not to use Pocket Base. This is one of those rare occasions where Pocket Base is not the right tool. And I know that might disappoint some of you, but let me tell you why. Pocket Base is a really great backend as a service. It allows you to spin up a lot of things super, super quickly. But you run into a problem when you're processing massive amounts of data, and that is performance. And unfortunately, that's one of the weaknesses of Pocket Base when you're processing lots and lots of data. Now, the, the answer that people say is, well, Pocket Base is usually deployed to one VM. So meaning once you put it on there, you can do um, performance scaling vertically. And, and what that means is, is you... Um, You've got uh, one gig of RAM to start with. So you might have one gigabyte. Ignore my weak writing here. And then uh, eventually you can scale that up to um, 32 gigabytes of RAM. Um, and it may not be RAM. It could be CPU. It could be anything. Um, and, and then even onwards from there. So you can just keep going up. Um, obviously, this comes with performance well sorry this comes with costs so whatever platform you're using or if you're self-hosting you're going to have to buy servers um, and this could cost you know thousands of dollars even hundreds of thousands of, of, of dollars on just one VM so the other solution is is to look at distributing to other VMs um, so you know if these were VMs you, you uh, create a system in which um, the, the instance for Pocket Base can go and, and scale to those other, other instances. And that's called horizontal scaling. That's what everyone's talking about with Pocket Base and one of the weaknesses that it has. And this is true. Pocket Base can't horizontally scale. And that's not the only weakness that, that Pocket Base has. So, one of the things that you encounter when you're processing millions and millions of rows of data is that you will have performance hits on actually querying the data sets. It will take time because there's just so much data to go through. And that's where you want to have some sort of system which allows for partitioning of the data. Um, and that's not something that Pocketbase has out of the box. Uh, it's something that needs to be built, something that needs to uh, have an ecosystem around it in order to support it. And there'll be some in the community who disagree with me and say, you can use this thing or this thing. Um, many of these things, like even I showcase Terso, and you can use Terso for, for this problem. Um, they're not going to work with all of the features of Pocket Base. So it rips out uh, largely the best part, which is extending Pocket Base. And being able to run these functions on top of pocket base, which, which are so cool. Um, you can't do that with a distributed system. So what I was left with in this particular case, the, the client you know, would have been otherwise perfect for, for SQL Lite and for, for pocket base by extension. You know, they only, they're probably not going to grow past 10,000 users for, for the app. Uh, it's an internal tool. Um, you know, I'm not saying you can, can't have, you know, external tools or commercial tools that use pocket base, but this, in this particular case, you know, it's a no brainer. Um, you know, they need an all system. Pocket base has an all system. They would like rate limiting. Pocket base has rate limiting. They want a bunch of stuff, which we get out of the box automatically with pocket base match made in heaven. Um, but this native sharding or the, 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 which is the performance problem I was talking about, um, it is not found within within um, within pocket base. So what I was left to do is to look at Postgres. Now, Postgres doesn't have native sharding. It doesn't have um, uh, native distribution either, but it does have plugins which are very easy to extend to um, like Postgres is, is an amazing database for extensions. 
and you can do pretty much everything on pocket base on po- Postgres that you can do on pocket base and more. Um, you know, vector DB stuff out of the box. Postgres is a brilliant database, um, and an architecture like this would mean that if we run into problems in the future, and it's most likely that we will, considering the amount of data that they're they're processing, um, we've got that assurance there. The other thing that went through my head as I was scoping out um, this particular project for a client this week was they tend to use Azure. And in my experience, Pocketbase is not the easiest to host on Azure. I find um, there's been certain issues I've had with just getting started with um, the container registry, um, uh, Azure Container Registry, for, for instance. Um, which I haven't had on GCP or AWS. And so what I'm playing into here is that my my strength on Azure will be better spent with using Postgres, which I have already used with Azure and it's worked flawlessly, than um, to try and fight and do something in a way that Azure doesn't make it easy for you to do. So... What I'm trying to get at here is that if it's not that the client's always right, but we've got to use the technology to fit the product and not the product to fit the technology because otherwise we're wasting our own time. Uh, We're learning technologies that are not going to be useful for the circumstances and we're actually refusing to, uh, to innovate. We're saying, no, I will only learn things if it's on pocket base. Um, and that's not a mindset I think that anyone should have. I think that we should look at technologies that are going to really suit the problem. So I want you guys to start thinking about where you you would move to in these sorts of circumstances. Maybe you can even give me some pointers and recommendations for maybe I'm wrong for pocket base. But I think that there is definitely a a case for using um, a system which is equally simple, but with more capabilities. Uh, The more you extend on something which doesn't want to be extended on, like pocket base doesn't doesn't want to handle this problem, uh, the the more complexity you're adding, because you're probably not going to come up with a good solution to solve that. And you'll spend all of your time trying to solve that problem and not the problem that the customer actually wants solved. So I hope this helps. If this has been helpful to you, I just ask that you subscribe to my newsletter. It's where I provide even more help. I provide the best news item of the week. I provide the uh, best tool for helping your productivity. And I also provide uh, tutorials, not just mine, but tutorials that I'm even learning from uh, to help you guys learn. Uh, and if you are a big fan of pocket base, like I am, I recommend that you check out fast pocket fast pockets. The way that I build it is my next JS SSR front end. And yeah, it will help you avoid the headache of building SSR pocket base. All of that said, thank you so much for being an amazing audience. And I hope to see you in the next one.